Hello, and welcome to another second grade episode of Math Matters. My name is Mrs. Cook, and today we're going to be reviewing related addition and subtraction facts to 20. We are going to get started today with an activity called Splat. Let's start by figuring out how many blue shapes are on the screen. There are eight blue shapes. How did you know there were eight? Did you count all eight shapes? Or did you see the dots in different groups, like maybe four and four, or a group of five and a group of three? Next, a splat will be coming. A splat will hide some of the shapes. You will want to use what you know about the number eight to help you figure out how many are hiding and be able to explain how you know. Are you ready? Splat. How many shapes are hiding under the splat? And how do you know? We'll pause here to give you time to think. How else could you know how many are under the splat? Let's look under the splat to see how many there are. There are three shapes hiding. Is that what you were thinking? Let's talk about some of the strategies you might have used. Maybe you saw the five and you counted on six, seven, eight. Or maybe you know your doubles and you saw four blue shapes and you knew four and four make eight. But you already had one of the other sets of four, which meant three had to be hiding under the splat. Or maybe you just subtracted eight minus the five that you could see and you knew that there were three hiding. Kind of using that think addition strategy, thinking five and some more equals eight. Did you have a different strategy? Go ahead and share it now. I notice you are using your communicator skills to connect to ideas and using your creative and critical thinking skills to look for new solutions. In today's lesson, we are going to continue to build our fact fluency to 20 with a focus on how we can use the relationship between addition and subtraction to help us solve related facts. As you follow along today, think about how you are able to break a whole number into parts, identify related addition and subtraction facts, Use facts you know to find the missing part in an equation. We will have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. In today's lesson, we invite you to continue working on your portrait of a graduate skills as you listen closely to the different strategies shared and see what connections you can make to your own ideas. As a creative and critical thinker, it will be helpful for you to see how you can think about problems in new and different ways. Here are a list of the materials you may want to gather as you work on communicating your thinking and writing. You will want to have something to write with, a pencil or crayons would work just fine, and some paper. We'll pause now to give you time to gather your materials. Here are some of the words you will want to listen for and make connections to as we go throughout our lesson today. Whole or total, part or piece of, butterfly, addition or combining, domino, a game piece with dots or pips on it, and subtraction and its different meanings like comparing, finding the difference or takeaway. 
We'll begin our lesson today by doing a notice and wonder. Take a moment to look at this picture and think about all the things you notice. If you have a pencil and paper ready, you can even write them down so you don't forget. We'll pause here. I'm thinking about what you might have noticed in this picture. Maybe it was the many bright colors or all the different butterflies. Maybe you noticed some of those butterflies seem to be flying and some were resting. Maybe you saw the flowers or the tall grass. Maybe you had a different idea. Go ahead and share it now. Now take a moment to look at the picture and think about what you might be wondering. Remember, you can write down your notes if you'd like to remember them later. We'll pause here. I bet you thought of some great questions as you looked at this picture. Maybe you were wondering, why do some of the butterfly's wings look open and others look closed? Or maybe you were thinking about how many butterflies are there in total? And maybe you were thinking, what season could it be? Spring or summer? Did you have a different wondering? Go ahead and share it now. You picked out some really great details in this picture, and there are many things to think about when we look at it. Today, we're going to build on these ideas about the total number of butterflies and the different parts, those butterflies that are open and appear to be flying, and the others that are resting. What addition and subtraction fact could you write to describe or match the butterflies in the picture? We'll pause here to give you a moment to think about the total number of butterflies and the parts so that you can write a matching addition and subtraction fact. If you're waiting while we pause to give everyone thinking time, then maybe you can think about what kind of story could you tell to go along with your addition or subtraction fact. There are a few different facts that you might have written to match the picture. And we're going to use this part, part, whole chart to help us organize our thinking. You might have started with counting the part with the six flying butterflies and then added the other part with the seven resting butterflies. When you combine or put those two parts together, you get a total of 13. So you may have written six plus seven equals 13. Or maybe you started with the other part, the seven resting butterflies first, and added the six flying butterflies for a total of 13 butterflies. So you wrote the addition fact seven plus six equals 13. But wait a minute, you could have started with the whole or total of 13 butterflies and subtracted or removed the six flying butterflies, which left you with the seven resting butterflies with a number sentence that reads 13 minus six equals seven. Finally, you could have started with the whole or total of 13 butterflies and subtracted the seven resting butterflies and had six flying butterflies left with a matching fact that reads 13 minus seven equals six. Wow, that's a lot of butterflies and lots of ways to think about how many. What do you notice about each of the facts or equations we wrote? What's the same? What's different? You're probably noticing there are the same numbers repeated. 
just in different ways. If we look at our part whole chart, we can see how these numbers are related. We can start with the parts and put them together in any order, and that gives us the whole or total. Or we can start with the total and take or remove some with the other part remaining. We call these four facts, two addition and two subtraction, a fact family because they are related. Knowing how facts are related like this and that addition and subtraction are the opposite action can help us solve addition and subtraction facts we don't know. Another tool we could use to help us think about the relationship between addition and subtraction facts is a number line. Let's take another look at the same facts from our part whole chart and see what they would look like using this tool. If we wanted to start with six plus seven equals 13, first we would show six and then the other part we would add on seven And you could see that would give us the total of 13. Or if we decided to start with the other part first, we would make a hop of seven and add on six more. And you can see that this would give us the same total 13. So no matter which part we started with first, we still end up with the same total 13. Or we could start at the total, which is 13, take away one of the parts. In this one, we'd be taking away six. So we would jump back or remove six. And that gives us the answer or that other missing part which is the total of that part seven. Or we could start at 13, remove the part seven, which would leave us with the other part, which is six. Take a moment to look at these addition and subtraction facts and think about how are they the same and how are they different. Let's practice what we're learning about related facts using this domino card. We know that a domino has a set of dots on both sides. On this card, we know there are a total of 12 dots, and if we count, there are eight dots on the side we can see. Can you figure out how many dots are hidden under the hand? Let's use our part whole chart to help us. We know there is a whole or total of 12 dots. And we also know there are eight dots on the one side we can see. We're wondering how many dots are hiding. What strategy could you use to help you figure out the missing part? Remember, if it's helpful, you can draw a number line on your paper to solve the problem. We'll pause here to give you thinking time. Let's come back together and share some of your ideas. Maybe you thought about the whole or total number of dots, which is 12, and took away the part you could see, which was eight dots. Or maybe you thought, I can see eight dots, so I'm going to add on or count up from that part and see how many I need to get the total 12. Either way, you discovered the missing part was four. Sometimes it's helpful to use the related fact to help you solve it. For example, if you thought of the problem as 12 minus eight, but didn't know the answer right away, you might have used the related addition fact eight plus four to help you solve it. Do you think you could write the missing facts from this fact family? 
take a moment to think about those and write them on your paper. Are you ready to check your work? That's right, the missing equations were 12 minus 4 equals 8 and 4 plus 8 equals 12. Knowing related addition and subtraction facts can help you solve problems you don't know. Here's a game you can play at home to help you practice using related facts. All you will need is some paper and something to write with to help you make this game. If you have dark colored paper or construction paper, that would be best so you can't see the numbers through the cards that you make. Once you have your materials, you will need to create a set of number cards with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 20. Remember, you want to only put one number on each card. Once you have made your set of cards, here's how you play the game Total 20. First, mix up the cards and place them face down in a pile in the middle of the table. Partner A will pick a card from the pile without looking and place it facing out on their head, just like the boy in the picture. Partner B's job will be to figure out the missing number that goes with the number they can see on their partner's head to make the total 20 and then they'll tell that number out loud to partner A. Then partner A must guess the number on their head based on the information partner B has given. Remember, the total must equal 20. So for example, in this picture, partner A has picked up a card and placed it on his head. He doesn't know what the number is, but partner B sees it and thinks to themselves, Hmm, what goes with 12 to make 20? Hmm, I can count up 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's eight. Eight goes with your number to make 20. So then partner A has to think, hmm, if I have the number eight, what would be on my head to go with eight to make 20? 20 minus 8 is 12. So partner A successfully would say, my card must be 12. Then partners switch roles and they repeat. Have fun playing. Today's lesson was a review of how we can use related facts to add and subtract with fluency to 20. Reflect on your progress towards our learning goals by selecting which emoji best matches how you're feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand but need more practice. And the confused emoji if you feel you have more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. Mathematicians are creative and critical thinkers always looking for connections and new ways to solve problems. What new connections did you make today? Did you challenge yourself to try a new strategy? What would you like to do differently tomorrow? As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there's something new you learned that you don't want to forget. Or maybe there's something we talked about today that you still have questions about. Take a minute to record your reflections on today's lesson and save them for the next time you're able to check in with your teacher. My name is Mrs. Cook and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for another second grade episode of Math Matters. Have a great day.